Okay, so I want to create a guessing game um, using the random number generator. A uh, program will randomly get a number between, will guess an, will randomly choose a number between one and n, where n is <clears throat> a number entered by the user, and a player will randomly try to guess that number. The game will continue until the player wins or loses, depending on um, whether they have too many guesses or not. So really something like this, you know, we might want to consider what would the pseudocode of this look like? you're in main, what has to happen here? So the first thing that has to happen is, well, where does that n come from? So we have to get, maybe in the beginning we, we give the instructions to the user, oh, this is a program that's gonna do this, 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 and this. Um, <clears throat> enter the top number that they're gonna guess to. So, you're going to get the integer that they're going to guess to, and that's going to return a value that capital N. That's an integer, so I might put that here just so I know. And then, <clears throat> so once you have that, the game begins. And what, what is the game? So the game will continue until the user wins or loses, but how would they win? They're going to win by guessing this N. So you want to continue while they haven't win, while they're not gonna win yet. While they're not winning, or while, while uh, yeah, while they have not won. I, I haven't defined what win is, but it's okay. While they have not won, what do we have to do? Well, you're gonna play a turn. So what's, what does one turn look like? So we could, we could have a method here called, you know, one turn, depending on how complicated the game is that one turn could then do things. Um, here, I feel like um, this one turn is not that complicated. So what, what is involved in a turn? Maybe I won't even have a function called one turn. I'll just have this code here. But let's see what's involved in one turn. Well, we have to let the user enter their guess. So we have to get their guess from the user. And then, what do we do with that guess? We need to check whether they've won or not. And then, you know, if they haven't won, then we'll get another guess for them. So um, that might be sort of within the turn, what is it? Well, when they're playing a game, we're sort of checking if they, you know, we're checking the guess. So, um, or processing the guess, let's call it. Process the guess. Because we want to see whether or not they won. And if they have won, we might want to tell them they've won. Um, if they haven't won, we might want to tell them to guess again. Um, and then this loop, will, this turn will continue to run until we're done. So what's happening in process guessed? They're either going to win or they're going to guess again. And so there's no way for them to lose this game. They can either just keep guessing or go again. We, we can put in code later to determine what to do with if they lose. And that would happen you know, up here somewhere. So they don't win and they don't lose, maybe, is when you would continue that loop. OK. You would think it's an or, but because you, you want to continue playing until they either win or they lose, when one of those things doesn't happen, it means they didn't win and they didn't lose. So that's a, an application of De Morgan's law. You see it in the, um, in the PowerPoint. OK, switching over to Canvas, uh, not Canvas. Switching over to Eclipse, well, let's make a new Java class, guessing game. And that, that part I just did is really the hard part, to be honest. I mean, coming up with the logic here is the work on paper. That if we have this logic in a sound manner, we can expand the program, we can change the game. I mean, this doesn't, this could be any game, really. Um, while they haven't won, continue to play a turn. I don't know. Okay, so headers up here.
name, the class, the date, um, program. Let's see, this is this game. We'll have the user enter capital N and then try to guess and then user player user will try to guess a number between one and n. And let's make it inclusive. Meaning I, whatever they enter, if they enter 10, it's a number between one and 10, including both one and 10. <clears throat> and we need to import the utilities for the random function. So, you know, sometimes you can tell the person why you're importing this. You don't have to, but it's a random object or class. Okay, so one thing you would not want to do is just start coding. You know, you, you want to figure out what am I doing with my code? And, and what, so what we're doing with our code is back over here. We want to give them the instructions and then get that integer n. So that's the first two things. So, you know, um, display instructions. Let's just call it in introduction. Or instructions, how about display instructions. I'm going to comment this out. Well, let's go ahead and set up the method. I'm not actually going to have the method do anything right now. Public static void display instructions because we can we can write this method later. It has no parameters, not returning anything, um, and we'll just say here, you know, complete later. And then integer capital N. We'll have another method called get. Uh, what did I call it? Get integer, get number. I'm not getting their guess yet. We're getting the integer, the upper maximum value. You could call it get max. And then down here in get max, set that function up. We're going to need that one. So um, public static returning an integer get max. I want to return value, so let's just return for now 10. And you know, I could put a comment in up here. Get max asks the user to enter the maximum and the values. Of the values, I guess. So uh, for now, um, again, we can complete this later. And then we can go into some of the logic of the random number generator and how does how is this while loop going to work? So um, while we have not won. So I need a Boolean here for winning. Okay, because I don't have a value for win. So while that Boolean is not true, so the, the Boolean win will be true when we win. The Boolean lose will be true if we have one when we lose. Um, or maybe we don't have a Boolean lose, maybe we have something else to represent when we lost. Um, but for our purposes, it's, notice it's not in my pseudocode. I'm using win, but I'm not defining it anywhere. But here, if I'm going to have um, my while loop depend on this Boolean win, well, in the beginning, we haven't won. So win is false. And that allows me to prime the loop while I have not won. Well, winning is not true. 
So now we need to get the guess from the user, and that involves an integer n, little n, equals get the guess. And then after they, so notice I don't have, I'm not, I'm not using this one term method. I'm just going to do it here in main. While they have not one, integer n equals get guess. And then let's process that guess. Sending the little number little n. And probably need to send capital N in here as well. Because process guess will need to know both the number they guessed and the number. Um, no, they won't need that. <laughs> go back to my pseudocode for a second. Well, okay, let's go back to my pseudocode for a second. I left something out. And that is, what number are they trying to guess? So we never generated that number that they're trying to guess. All we did was get from the user the values between it. So in here, I need the value they're trying to guess. So uh, we need to give that a name. Let's call it the answer. You need this. You need to randomly generate this. So back over here in my code. That's happening up here. So right after we get that integer, we can say integer answer equals r dot next int. Oh, I need a random. I'm just tanking this left and right. So we're going to go random. Sorry, r equals new random this is coming because i didn't i didn't my pseudocode was not very well developed so we, random object the integer that we're going to guess up to the answer so that's going to go up to n so that would be from zero to n minus one and if i want to go from one to n i take that value and i add one to it and that will be a number between 1 and n. OK, and then so now, now we've displayed the instructions. We've got the upper value from the user. We've randomly generated an answer. We say that the win is false. We're good to go. While we have not won, we're going to get the guess from the user. And then we're going to process that guess using n and the answer. And again, maybe this isn't a function. Maybe I just do this right here. But for now, let's just. I think I can just do this right here. Yeah, let's not have a function here. Leave it as pseudocode for a second. Yeah, maybe I'll have a function for it. OK, so first off, we need to get the guess from the user. So we'll do that. Public static integer get guess. So we need to prompt which is to tell the user to enter a number between, well, we need to tell them between 1 and n. So this get guess, I now need to send actually the parameter capital N into it. And it wants me to return something. So let's just return 0 for now. So whenever we're going to get something from the user, we need a scanner. The so scanner console equals new scanner system.in. We need a prompt. So one way to have the prompt is just to ask the user to enter their thing. Another way to do it is just to set up a string called prompt. 
and then you can just print the prompt each time you need it. So if you have to print it more than once, it's sometimes good to just have the prompt. I know I'm gonna have to print this more than once. Prompt, enter a number, enter an integer, between, so now I wanna go between one and capital N, but I don't wanna have to um, break this apart. So I'm gonna put this prompt in a print F statement. So I'm gonna put, percent D and I'll put in parentheses inclusive. You can include both those numbers and I'll put a colon and a space at the end of my prompt. So now we will print that. So system dot out dot Print F prompt with the argument of capital N. Now I just did a lot, so I just want to make sure that's working. Yeah, I went into this infinite while loop here. Um, so stop. Um, to set win equal to true for a second. Oh, I didn't save that. I don't know what happened. I'm confusing myself. Let's not do that. Um, <clears throat> Let's take these lines of code out for just a minute and just make sure this is working. Oh, I see. I never got out of that loop. I never, it was still, it was still running. I never terminated the program. So it's still running. See the little blue circle? I can stop it and then I can run it again. And it runs again. And it, it looks like that, that input is printing twice for some reason. And I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, so when I went to comment this out, it didn't look like it was doing anything, but let's try it again and just see what happens. Yeah, doing something weird there. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but let's let's not worry about it yet. Um, <clears throat> return zero, I'm not sure, but let's figure it out from here. So enter a number between, oh, I know. Well, I don't, oh, it's waiting for me to enter a number. That's why. That ran twice, no. Yeah, this is in the while loop. So it's just running again and again and again and again. Um, so not do I want to do that yet. Okay. Um, sorry, I got lost what I was doing. Enter number between one and n inclusive. So that's gonna print that. There's my prompt. System formatted, it's fine. I enter a number, I want to return that number, but I also want to make sure. So let's first off just return that number, see what happens. So return console dot next integer. And then how can I process this? I can say if, so what makes it when they win? If little n is equal to big N. No, if little n is equal to the answer. Then we want to print you win. 
And at the same time, we want to change win to true so that our loop will stop running. If they're not equal, they haven't lost, we want them to guess again. Let's walk through this logic again. Little n is getting that from the user. If n is equal to the answer, they win. Win equals true, it'll leave this loop. Otherwise, it'll say guess again. We'll go back into this loop and get another n value. So now let's try to run it. We should be able to play the game now. Enter a number between one and 10, five. Guess again, four. Guess again, three. Guess again, two. Guess again, one. Uh, we're, we're not doing very well here. We meaning I am not doing very well, but maybe there's a problem with it. Um, let's, well, we're halfway through, so maybe not yet. Six, seven, we'll know if, oh, I won. So the, the answer was seven. Let's run it again. Um, we might need to print big N, you know, we might have to print that guy. Oh, the answer was 10, we win. Okay, so the game is running. The game is appears to be working. Uh, we might have to put some test print statements in and make sure it actually is working. Uh, one thing I know about the game is that it's not robust. Ah, it's gonna crash if I don't enter an integer. So I have this built in here. In get input, get guess here, we could verify that the input is valid here. So we would say something to the effect of, um, just trying to figure out where that loop goes. We need the prompt first. So the loop goes after the prompt and we say while, while the console does not have an integer next. So while console does not have a next integer, we need to clear the console out. Or whatever it does have. And then we need to reprint the prompt. And we don't, we need it to check if it has next integer. So the, while the console does not have another integer next, does not have an integer next, read that value in that it does have and then print the prompt again. And then this little while loop will continue to run until they until the user enters an integer and then it will, um, and then it will return that integer. So it's going to look the same, except if I enter an H by mistake. Oh, also, if I enter an H, I should probably tell the user invalid input. So right before we prompt, maybe we put a line here, system out dot print line invalid input again. Got it right away. Five. Invalid input, try again. Enter an integer between one and 10. 5.5, .5. invalid input, try again. Enter an number between one and 10. Yay, we won. No way to lose this game. <laughs> um, and for some reason, it's waiting for another input. No. Um, okay, so go back up. So how do you lose this game? What's not done? Um, 
Well, a couple of things are not done. Go back to main. We never displayed instructions. We call a function called get max, but that actually should get the maximum value from the user. And again, that should contain code that's robust. So when they enter in something that doesn't make sense, whether that's an integer or even a negative integer, because you can't go from zero to negative 20, you would, I mean, I guess you could, but that would be weird. Um, so the maximum probably should be bigger than zero. Uh, so that you could make this robust in get max and then get guess is done. Um, so let's go back up to this description here. This game will have user entry, enter n, and then we'll try to guess a number between one and n inclusive. The game should end when the user either wins by guessing the answer. or loses by using up all their turns. You could say how many turns they want. Turns equals, um, so we haven't written that part. Maybe I'll make that part of a new assignment for you. I don't know. You could just try it on your own to modify this program, um, put some turns in. You could, uh, you know, the number of turns you, you get would kind of depend on the capital N here. I mean, if, if capital N is 100, right, if you could be guessing all day. So if you're allowing a larger capital N, we could modify this game um, down here when we process. So notice in here, all this is happening. This is my processing the results. If I change that to a method call here that I took out, it would need to send both n and the answer to that. Um, I could modify the code to sort of tell the user instead of th that they just have to guess again, we could determine if their guess is too big or too small, and we could say guess larger or guess smaller based on that. And that could be a modification to the game as well. All right, I think I'll end this guy here. And that, you know, if I was gonna do that, if I was gonna add more complexity, then, then I think I would capture all of this code, take it out of main and put it into a, a method and so that main becomes more clear you know, these are sort of the, the initial um, initializations. Beginning, this is beginning the game, and then this is one game. You could also modify to play again. Would you like to play again, yes or no? So then that would be playing multiple games, um, and you would probably go back to, I think, you know, here that all of that code would be involved in playing another game. So you'd have to somehow loop it, maybe have the declarations for n and answer be higher because you'd have to declare them first before you assign them because they're then getting multiple values within a, some kind of loop. So that would be another modification would, would be once they've won or lost, would they want to play again? All right, I think that's it for me.